This is the prototypical symptom story of plantar fasciitis. And what I want to do is I want to describe to you what can occur in addition to this as a result of compensation for the problem if you've had the problem for more than a few weeks. So plantar fasciitis, first of all, is just an inflammation that occurs at the bottom of your heel, right at where the plantar fascia, or at least part of the plantar fascia, inserts into the heel bone. And plantar fasciitis occurs because there's an inflammation that occurs usually due to overuse or some activity that was the result of some minor abuse. In other words, you weren't used to running the mileage that you ran or you went and you took a vacation and you, you walked too long in the wrong footwear and you developed this, this ache. And it got to the point where maybe it's hurting you now, it's become more than a nuisance. So plantar fasciitis is an ache in the bottom of the heel. And it occurs uh, worse in the morning and after resting, but can develop to the point where it becomes durational. So many people know that. And um, that's not an uncommon piece of information. But what many people don't understand about plantar fasciitis is that it usually presents as a package of lateral heel pain, possibly medial heel pain unrelated to plantar fasciitis, and possibly even Achilles tendonitis. So I'm gonna break down the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis and how we rule out these other problems that often confuse patients because they think they're just going to the doctor to get treated for plantar fasciitis and this is all they have. And what they don't realize is that there are a number of diagnoses that can come along with plantar fasciitis. So the first one that we're going to cover is a very common problem that I, I call periostitis, which is simply inflammation of the bone. And this is, uh, occurs on the lateral plantar aspect of the heel bone. So right here on your heel, you're going to have a pain. And this is due to compensation. This is due to you walking on the outsides of your feet because the plantar fasciitis or the inside uh, bottom surface of your heel is too painful to walk on. If a patient has pain on the bottom of their heel, okay, right here, they're going to have a tendency to bear weight on the outside of their foot or roll their foot to the outside. So as you can see, here I'm rolling her foot actively. Look what happens. It takes the weight off the plantar fascia, but changes the attitude of the foot and puts more weight on the lateral column. So you, you tend to over invert your foot. And this, is, this happens a lot uh, uh, of the time and when patients have uh, a condition where they have both plantar heel pain and lateral heel pain, it doesn't surprise us at all. Uh, but we wanna make sure that the patient understands that these are two different problems. Periostitis simply means an inflammation of the bone and it occurs because the outer covering of the bone becomes sensitive or even bruised, and this is due to uh, a shifting of weight uh, that you're not used to. And that's why you get what we call periostitis, which is this simply inflammation of the covering of the bone all the way over here on the lateral aspect of the heel. So even down here under the heel on the outside of the foot, you're going to have pain. So. That's the first diagnosis. It's not necessarily a rule out, it's sort of a sidecar diagnosis. It comes with the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. The second sidecar diagnosis is something that occurs a little bit distal to where the side of the heel is. And that is, is right at the calcaneal cuboid joint. And we refer to this as cuboid syndrome. Now this is simply an inflammation of the ligament that supports that joint. And many doctors will diagnose this as a subluxation. And in fact, it can be a subluxation in some cases, but oftentimes if you've had uh, essentially been walking normally and problem-free for your entire life and you develop this problem and you know you have plantar fasciitis, it occurs simply because of compensation. All of this we'll call the lateral surface of the heel bone, all this area right here. And then, at about right here, there's a joint between the heel bone and what's called the cuboid bone. And underneath 
This joint is a ligament that actually supports those two bones, all located under the foot. That ligament can get very inflamed. Why? Because the more she stands on the outside of her foot, the more stress there is at this ligament. There can even be a subluxation occurring at this joint. So cuboid syndrome is just an inflammation of the joint and the ligament that supports the calcaneal cuboid joint, again, along the outside of the foot. Now, uh, the third side car diagnosis also occurs on the outside of the foot, and that is called peroneal tendonitis. And what that involves is a tendon that inserts right into the side of the styloid process of the fifth metatarsal bone. So your fifth metatarsal bone is right here. You have a tendon that inserts right into there. And that tendon uh, can become very, very tender at, at its insertion. But the problem is there's a tendon that comes down right here, and I'm following it, and inserts into the fifth metatarsal bone called the peroneal tendon. This is the peroneus brevis tendon. And this tendon can create tremendous pulling just by shifting your weight to the outside of the foot. So the more she tries to walk or compensate for this pain on the bottom of the heel by walking on the side of the foot, the more of a chance that she's going to get pain at the insertion of the peroneus tendon, which is right here at the base of the fifth metatarsal. So I'll draw on the base and we'll show you where that pain is. So uh, this, to summarize these first three sidecar diagnoses, there are a number of problems that can occur all the way down the lateral column of the foot, all because of compensation. And it really doesn't stop there. You can have pain along the shaft of the fifth metatarsal. Um, and pain on the side of the fifth toe, all the way down the lateral column. Uh, just so you better understand what I'm talking about, the pain on the metatarsal can be periostitis of the metatarsal. Uh, the pain on the side of the toe can be a corn that's rubbing, all because you're compensating for plantar fasciitis. So you can see why it's so important to get rid of the plantar fasciitis before you start having all these other symptoms. Now, what can occur along the medial aspect of the foot uh, when you have chronic plantar fasciitis or you've been struggling with this and you have it for a, a, a while? Well, there's something called Baxter's neuritis. Now this is more of a nerve problem. There's a little branch that comes off the posterior tibial nerve that comes down the side of the heel and inserts right under the spur or right near the spur and that's called Baxter's nerve. So neuritis often feels like burning. So if you're, you find that your pain is shifted from a dull aching to a sharp shooting pain, you may have Baxter's neuritis. Now you also may have a bursitis, which is a fluid-filled sac that's attempting to protect the bottom of your heel from the ground. This is quite different than plantar fasciitis, but I'm telling you that this can happen along with fasciitis because it does. And there are people that have diminished fat on the bottoms of their heels, and they end up uh, having both bursitis and plantar fasciitis at the same time. So this should be ruled out. So those can occur along the medial and plantar aspect of the heel. You can also have along the medial aspect of the heel tarsal tunnel syndrome, a lot like uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, but it occurs along the medial aspect of the heel where the laciniate ligament uh, a ligament that is just below your medial ankle bone is inflamed or the structures that pass through the ligament are inflamed. Um, a tendon, an artery, and a nerve, a vein uh, constantly um, are, are uh, conducting uh, fluids and signals uh, through that particular uh, anatomical structure and can develop symptomatology. So, have we covered everything and have I confused you at all? Well, I hope not because all I'm trying to do is let you know that there are a number of diagnoses that can come along with the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. Now, I've saved stress fracture for last because a stress fracture should always be ruled out when somebody comes in with heel pain. Uh, there are also a number of collagen vascular disorders that uh, can come in and present a lot like plantar fasciitis and need to be ruled out by your doctor. But a stress fracture can be easily ruled out by simply squeezing the heel from side to side. Uh, if that creates pain, it's well worth it to get a bone scan, a CT, or an MRI to rule out 
uh, stress fracture. Although clinically, side-to-side -side compression pain that is unrealistic pain, in other words, it really makes you jump, is enough to, to consider a stress fracture of the heel bone. Now, this isn't a obvious fracture in many cases, and you can't see it on x-ray, but um, your heel is a lot like a tree, and there are patterns uh, of uh, lines of force within the heel that uh, can conduct uh, a small fracture. And when those lines of force um, are uh, stressed too much, then uh, you can develop a stress fracture, and this needs to be treated quite differently oftentimes than plantar fasciitis. So that's a lot. And, um, you know, I hope what I've been able to do in this talk is to simply just get you to understand that uh, plantar fasciitis, while a common problem, um, often confuses people because um, they are suffering with these other problems in addition to the fasciitis. Now, most of the other problems I've discussed are easy to treat um, and can be ruled out the minute you see the doctor and treated. So um, at this point, uh, what I'd like to do is to leave you with this information, let you digest it, and when you're ready, um, we'll address what to expect when you come to the doctor's office and you're uh, treated for plantar fasciitis on visit one. And I'll cover a couple of different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario may be just a patient who has a brand new case of heel pain a couple weeks old. Uh, the second scenario may be a patient that has had heel pain for four or five weeks. And maybe we'll cover a scenario that's a little bit more uh, aggressive and long-term than that. However, uh, we're trying here to just uh, discuss the routine conservative treatment of plantar fasciitis at this time. In a follow-up video, we'll discuss um, surgical treatment, and we're also going to discuss home remedies in a follow-up video, so be looking for that.